Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Rob Provence. I am a full-time wedding portrait, commercial, boudoir, family, fairy photographer. Been in this game about 40, 41 years now and I'm still going strong. One of the things that we photograph a lot of is our fairy portraits, as you can see down here in this category below. And what I want to show to you today is how I, how I workflow what's called my ice fairies, which are these images here, as you can see on the screen. This is a newer product that uh, we started doing a year and a half ago, and we do a lot of promotions uh, since then. And they're not as popular as the, you know, the forest fairies, which are these here but they uh, are still kind of popular, especially with the new Frozen 2 coming out, the movie that all the little girls seem to be crazy about. And I'm going to not get into deep, deep, deep marketing or Photoshop details as far as how I do my workflow. I want to give you the general overview. It wouldn't be fair to my clients and it wouldn't be fair to my members of uh, my website, which is uh, called photosuccess.com, where I... Uh, have a lot of uh, videos and a lot of resources on doing how I do marketing in my photography business, uh, including fairies. I've got a lot of information on that. So let me close this and this and get right into it. So again, the idea is is that I want to I want to convey to you some really important ideas. Because people get stuck on certain ideologies, and I try and pull them away from that. Because there's this there's this thing called being profitable, and that's where I'm after. That's what I want to achieve in my business. Because this is my full time job. My wife and I run the photography studio, and we started doing fairies like 18 years ago, and it's become a mainstay product of ours. We've gotten so popular one of the reasons is is because well the brand is becoming very well known but we've also taken it on the road starting five years ago to uh other cities and very popular no matter where we go the fairies seem to be a very popular item so i want to start now by showing you the size now this image here of the little girl on the left this is a full resolution image it's a 42 megapixel camera it's a sony a7r2 uh when i'm shooting these images i'm shooting with a standard lens of 55, the uh, Sony Zeiss 55, which is a very, very sharp lens. I, I don't use my 85 or 135 because I have to pull back and I have to get the whole scene in there. So the 55 seems to be the go-to lens. Now here's the problem. This is a big file. Uh, even though my computer is fairly up to date and it's pretty fast, I want to save time. I could spend a lot of time on each one of these images. I could really pick them apart and do a stunningly good image. But my idea is, is that good enough is good enough. My clients love it and it sells, okay? The most important thing I want to do is make sales and have happy clients. If you don't have happy clients, you don't really have a business. So that's of vital importance. But I don't want to push it too far and become so obsessed with quality that it doesn't make any sense that uh, uh, we're delivering a product over the top. So you have to be able to, in many ways, decipher and distinguish and use a bit of discretion or a lot of discretion on how you pick that. It's I find it very hard to convey that message, especially to newer photographers. So I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm sure I'm going to offend a few people. So everything I, sh I send to my lab goes at 200 resolution. You can see this one's at 350. The industry standard is 300. If that works for you and you're stuck on 300, fine. I've noticed that n anything uh, above 200 doesn't make a difference. So what I do, if I'm working, a lot of my images are four by, uh, not four by fives, five by sevens or five by sevens. We sell a lot of packages and some wall portraits. So if a typical order say is like six files, maybe she's ordered an 11 by 14 or a 20 by 30, and then some eight by tens and five by sevens, uh, the 20 by 30 canvas, I'll work on it full resolution, okay? I'm going to spend extra time. The other images I'll show you right now. I'm going to rotate that using my Photoshop action. And I have a shortcut on my computer that sizes it down. You can see what just happened. Now I'm going to rotate it again. And this action uh, is working on a horizontal. So that's why, that's why I rotated it. 
and then now we have this image size down to 12 by 8 at 200 okay I use this action all the time because a large number of our images are gift size that's what these are called they make a, a large part of our uh, profit base and our sales so I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours the extra time it would take to work on a full resolution some photographers are going to counter that and they're going to say well what if what if down the road you've done a 5 by 7 or an 8 by 10 and she wants to order 20 by 30 well if that's the case I'm just going to go grab the original and start it over at full resolution and do it uh, like as if it's a full resolution image a large wall canvas now I got to be honest with you when I'm doing a wall portrait I do tend to pick at it some more they're spending substantially more money so I want to make sure it's really good all right now I also have a Photoshop action which I'm going to go through in a minute but before I run my Photoshop action I am going to use my select tool and I want to get rid of this rope now this rope we no longer use this was the first time we did fairies ice fairies and uh, we kind of changed it up a bit so I just used to select did a selection and um, I filled it with uh, content aware um, I could probably do the same with this image here or this rope here I'm gonna see what happens boom so right click fill content aware yeah not bad pretty good okay now I'm gonna run my action on my computer it's a shift F5 Let's try that again. I was hitting the wrong one. Once I run the action, I'm going to show you step by step. Which is uh, not working, and I don't know why. All right. I'm going to do this instead. Uh, I'm running a screen recording software, and I think that that's getting in the way so here I got a folder fit Rob's fairies actions all the most popular actions I use for either regular fairies and uh, softening um, and we also do medieval pictures those are really cool and proofing and etc etc we have proofing for ice fairies and then I have ice fairies workflow you see that right there Oh, I lost my shortcut. That's why it wasn't working. Usually it's Shift F5. All right, let's change it up. Shift F5. Okay. All right, I must have lost it for whatever reason. That's because I'm doing a video on Murphy's Law. All right, let's run that action again now. I hit Shift F5, and it should be working now. There it is. Bingo. All right, let me show you what just happened. Bum, bum, bum. there's before there's after so I have a I use camera raw filter a lot even though I 100% shoot JPEG I do not shoot raw I still use camera raw filter it's an amazing it's probably one of my favorite favorite plugins and steps in Photoshop and I adjust the tones and then I, I increase the contrast using curves and then I went to selective color, adding a little bit of black. And then I ran through uh, topaz. That's too strong, so I faded the topaz. Okay, see that? Okay, so what I just showed you, when I'm working on an actual order, what I just showed you takes maximum, maximum 15 seconds. Typically 10, often 5. I open the image. I... Um, Rotate, downsize, rotate, rotate, hit uh, shift F5, and I get to this point. It's pretty fast. So what I often do is this. I hit my history button, history brush, okay, and I go to the steps in the history palette where I just ran that action, and I click under this, this state, okay, but I'm going to keep the actual state here. And I will go in somewhere between 30, 40, 20, whatever works. I will go in and I will paint in some of the history from the full topaz. And it's topaz adjust. 
And if you give me a minute, I'll actually show you a little bit about that. Just let me uh, finish this. So I'll pull in a little more detail. You can see it. Right. Let's go back here. Boom. To here. Boom. That's the action. There it is. Enhanced a little bit more. Sometimes I get little doodads on the backdrop and I just clean those up a little bit. So everything you just saw now is taking about 20 seconds. So I'm going to go, I have a template. Okay, all my members get the template. It's a free download as well as the uh, Forest Fairies template. Okay, I'm going to select all these. Now when I'm working on a lot of orders, I keep these always selected. Now I have wings for um, my fairies. See, uh, oh, these wings were added later. Let me just show. I'm going to talk about wings for a minute here. Hold on. Our wings are very high quality. We've spent a lot of money on them. Uh, these are the wings we have. They're made out of a plastic, and they're very well put together. When the girls sit in the hoop, uh, we can't put the wings on. So we have to do this. We have to add wings later. See, these are the actual real wings. And these are the, that's, I think that's the same, same girl, it looks like. Here's a, the wings added. We probably, in this image here, could have had her wear the wings. We probably just forgot, which happens. So, this little girl, I'm not sure why she doesn't have wings, but it's a good thing because I'm now going to show you how we add wings. All right, so we're just going to bring that. I'm going to drag it over. And this has been, all these textures have been sized down, roughly speaking, to an 8x12. If I was working on a full resolution image, I would have to go in and size each one of these layers. So I'm going to start with the wings. I'm just going to, whoops, let's select just the wings, okay? I'm just going to move that to the side. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. And I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to use the erase tool and I'm going to increase the decrease the opacity and increase the brush size. And I'm going to start erasing away these different textures as you can see. See the icicles on top? Snowflakes, we have all kinds of different textures. Snow So I'm going to take some of the snow from the bottom where her legs are. So I erase. It takes a little bit longer. Once I'm done everything, uh, I flatten and then um, save. All right, so here are lights. See them? So I always add a light glare to the lantern. Now I can increase that. I can decrease it. I think the default I've set it as somewhere in 80. And if I want to increase it in, in as far as intensity is concerned, I'll drag that layer down. Boom. And which I'll often do for the lantern, specifically for the lantern. So I'm going to add another light orb here. I'm going to add one. I, I usually add, the, add them randomly. I just kind of position them wherever I want. Okay, this image is almost done. Okay, let's go to the wings. So control T will we'll, uh, size it down. So I'm gonna kind of guess where the middle of her back is just below the neck. And then I'm gonna make a duplicate. And then I'm gonna go to edit, edit, transform. Wrong one, sorry, edit. Transform, flip horizontal. So I got two sets of wings, Control T or Command T on a Mac. So that's roughly speaking where the wings are going to end up. And all I got to do now, 100% opacity, is go in and erase. See that? Got to make sure you get all the wings erased. Otherwise, little bits might end up on her face and it won't look right. So I go in there, and um, when I'm adding wings, which is not often, 
if the pose won't allow me to wear wing add wings i'll add them later if i can or sometimes get little babies or little kids that are like no i'm not wearing the wings and i'm like okay well i'll just add the wings. a little more work so this is adding a couple minutes to my workflow typically again this doesn't happen and you know we're almost done all right so there we got the wings uh, the wings are not perfect. And I probably would have had that down there some more. And but because I'm uh, really just trying to demonstrate to you how this works and give you the general overarching ideas. We used to have a full-time employee who did all this and we've kind of pulled back our business. I'm 61 now. I'm kind of like, want to just take it a little easier, but I do do my, all my own workflow. Uh, there was back in the day, we had a full, full-time and, and part-time as well in our busy season, you know, Christmas and whatnot. But uh, I, I rather enjoy sitting down a couple hours a week or whatever I'm doing, depending some, some weeks I'm doing like two full days of workflow. And I'm doing it all myself. So that image is done, almost. Okay, I'm going to flatten it. Shift Control E. Then I'm going to, I'm going to hit my action. I have an action. It's called Airbrush Frequency Separation. It's my most favorite tool for softening. And I always put it down to 10 when I run that action. I use it on all my stuff. It's an action I created and uh, I absolutely love it. So it mimics frequency separation. So I go in there. I mean, if you're doing legit step-by-step -step frequency separation, that's just going to add so much more time. And it's all about saving time. Okay, so it's frequency separation is really nice on the skin. So then I'll pull back. I'm still at 10%. I'll just give large swaths of that softening just to give it an overall softening so you can see the result. That's it. Taint no more. And uh, if you want more detailed coaching and information and uh, insider strategies as to how I run my studio, both in marketing and workflow, um, Click the link down below, support me on Patreon, and uh, do sign up for this, uh, for my uh, YouTube channel. I got more stuff coming all the time, and uh, helping out people run uh, successful businesses in photography. And thanks for watching. I much appreciate it. Bye for now.